this CIL 532 video podcast is going to show you uh, what a concept attainment file is, how you would go about presenting it with your class. In a separate podcast, we'll then look at how you could create one yourself using PowerPoint. Before we get into that, let's look at an ELL lesson cycle. This came from Jeanette Gordon, Denetter, Meyer, and John Hilliard from the Illinois Resource Center. So they've done some work, and this is an ELL lesson cycle. So you start with what you want your students to understand, and that comes from the Common Core Standards now. Um, and there are also the English Language Proficiency Standards, the WIDA Standards. Uh, so you have your content standard and an English language standard. So in a preview, you want to front load essential knowledge in a visual, concrete, engaging way in the home language, if you can. Preview the key concepts and the vocabulary visually. And you f the focus here is to develop the oral academic language. The using the words, speaking the words, you know, the academic language that you want them. And that comes from your uh, English language proficiency standards. The focused learning phase. Now you would give them something to read. This is the literacy part. Uh, you could do a language experience approach or shared writing, which is what a language experience approach is, essentially. Uh, you provide materials, multiple reading levels, and home language. Graphic organizers to help them understand and process the text. Uh, at this phase, students may begin to work on a project or research. And then the application phase, students complete a writing assignment um, on the content. They may prepare an oral presentation or a performance. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a long report. It could just be you know, using that language and you know, do a, a short oral presentation that they prepare. It's not spontaneous. You give them time to prepare and practice. And students could also complete a real-world project or product that they possibly started up here. Technology uh, is good. The front-loading essential knowledge um, and the preview here. I mean, that's basically the preview guide, which is the other option for this assignment. Um, it's also a concept attainment if you do it that way. And the concept attainment is nothing technology specific. It's a tactic that you can use to teach academic language to ELL students and any students. You can use technology with concept attainment preview guides or other ways focusing on developing that oral academic language. Uh, even podcasts, listening to things. In the focused learning phase, Technology can be used in different ways to introduce the literacy to do that shared writing. If you've got a, an interactive whiteboard, a smart board, or a Promethean, or another brand, graphic organizers on a board like that as well, an interactive whiteboard can be done with technology. Or if you don't have that, uh, they, if you have you know classroom computers or iPads or something, there are apps that you can use, there are programs that you can use uh, Kidspiration, Inspiration. On an iPad, there's one called Poplet, a free Poplet light that allows you to create graphic organizers. Um, that can be done with technology. Or even if you had just a projector, a screen, and a document camera, by doing it under the document camera together, showing them how a specific graphic organizer works, Technology can be used uh, for the project or the research. And then this oral report presentation that they do might have technology in it as well. And then the real world project or product could also be completed with the technology. So those are just some options in kind of this ELL lesson cycle. That ELL lessons must begin with an interactive highly comprehensible activity designed to develop oral academic language. The language of the content, the 
you know, compare, contrast. That's academic language. That's not social language. Uh, and also these activities to build the background knowledge. So again, this is either a preview guide or this can be also done with the concept attainment. They also say oral language is the key to literacy development. If you want ELL students to be better readers, if you want your little guys in preschool and kindergarten to be better readers and writers, eventually even if they are native speakers, oral language is the key. Got to get them talking. This is taken from an actual lesson that I did. Uh, it was originally done in Smart Notebook because I have a smart board, but I've put it into PowerPoint now so you could see how it would be done here because most everybody has access to PowerPoint but not everybody has smart notebook. The QAR strategy part, forget about that. Okay, that was specifically part of this lesson that I was doing. Some of the students in previous classes have gotten confused by that and thought that they had to have that on theirs as well. It has nothing to do, the concept attainment has nothing to do specifically with the QAR strategy. Uh, the QAR strategy, in case you don't know, is the question answer relationship. So for this one, and this actually sprang from a lesson that we were doing in math, where looking at a graph and then answering the little questions, I went and made the smart notebook file later to kind of, because they didn't have that question answer relationship. They didn't understand how the words had to connect. So I used that exact same question, which you'll see at the end, to kind of build that connection between questions and answers first thing I do so I just click the mouse or whatever and this Pepsi appears notice that the uh, URL is here and I will show you how to do that in the next podcast and when this comes out I have the students talk about it oral language and I just have them turn to a partner and they talk about it what is it you know just say something about it and then you know, I'll have a volunteer to tell what they discussed, what they talked about it, what they said about it. And then I'm going to say, okay, well, this one I'm going to put, and now I'm just clicking the mouse button again. I'm going to put it over here in this column. And then I tell them what I want you to start doing is when these other pictures come in, I want you to start thinking about why they are in the specific columns, why they go in the column that I put them in. So I click the mouse or hit the space bar, several ways to advance a, a PowerPoint presentation, and this new picture comes up, and it goes to the middle. Give them an opportunity again. Talk about it. What do you see? What is it? You know, just let them talk, or a language. I say, okay, this one, this one, and I'm clicking the mouse again. This one, I'm going to have come over here. Talk about what you see now with uh, your partner. Just let them start thinking about why they're separate. And at this point, actually, I wouldn't have them share out yet. Because as more and more things get added to it, what you think might change. So click the button, got the next thing that comes out. So again, process. Talk about it with your partner. Have someone share what they talked about. And then I say, okay, think about where you would put this based on what you said about what you see here where would you put this one over here with the Pepsi or over here with the popcorn think about it talk about it with your partner okay so always the talking part now I'm going to after I you know give them some time I'll say all right here we go I click and the next one oh, tricked them I will show you in the next podcast how to make that go in more than just a straight line. Talk to your neighbor. You may have put it over here with the Pepsi and it ended up over here. Talk about why. Why did you think that it should have been here and now that it's over here, change, you know, your thinking has to change. So talk about it a little bit. Maybe this is where you thought it went and you have a reason. Maybe it's correct, maybe not. We'll find out as we get more and more. All right, so then I'll bring out the next one. Okay, so at this point, now that they've got a couple of examples here, I'm going to start giving them a little bit more control. 
we're going to have more discussion about it. So the process, right? So if you're kind of taking notes on this, the process is you bring out the picture, you discuss it, have the students discuss it, say something about it, talk about it with partners, and then share out, you know, just what it is and what you do, you know, anything, whatever they want to say about it. Get a couple of those. Then the picture goes to a column. Have them think about, talk about that. But at this point, you know, talk about it with your partners. Where is this going to go? Talk about it. And now I'm going to have someone share. Who would like to share about where they put it? Have a couple people explain their thinking, talk about it a little bit. I'm not telling them right or wrong. So now it's over here. So now the process again. Now that you have two examples in each, talk about it again with your partner. Why are these together over on the left? Why are these together on the right? Have them talk about it. Have a couple people share. And then we'll bring out the next one. So at this point again, process. Go ahead and say something about it. Talk about it. Share. Talk about it with your partner. Where is it going to go? Which column is it going to go into? Give them time. Talk about it. Have a couple people share. Another thing that I just thought of is during that discussion time, if you have students, you know, low English proficiency, if they are talking about it, in their native language, that's fine. That's perfect because we're getting them thinking right now and that's how they think. Okay, we haven't introduced the academic language yet really. You know, we're not expecting them to learn any of the words yet. And if you have some, you know, the ones, the very low proficiency who maybe only speak uh, their native language, and, I mean, you probably already have them like sitting near or partnered with someone who is also a speaker of that language so they can talk. So after they've discussed it, say, all right, let's see. Everybody has thought about and we've talked about it and you, you think you know where it's going to go. Let's see. Another thing that I just thought about too is that I was doing this with third graders, kindergartners, first graders, you're going to alter this a little bit and maybe whole group more often or, you know, you know your class, you know how you would do that. But this was with third grade. So we talk about, okay, when there was just one, the Pepsi and the popcorn, you had an idea of why they were there. Then we had the popcorn and the ice cream and the Pepsi. So your thinking may have changed. Then we had the milk and the Pepsi, the popcorn and the ice cream. So your thinking may have changed. So see, as you get more information, right, this is kind of a, an important lesson as well. It's not necessarily part of the concept attainment, but it's just a, a good lesson to teach them that these predictions or your hypothesis wouldn't necessarily be using those words, but you know, what you think changes when you get new information. And if you if it changed when you just had the first two and then when you added the second one and you know if it changed a lot it doesn't mean that it was wrong it just meant based on the information you had if it made sense it's okay and when you got new information well it didn't make sense anymore so you had to change that's a fabulous lesson for all students to learn back to this they discuss again okay so now they have more information why are these together why are these together talk about it share out a couple people bring out the next one okay what is it right the process again talk about it what is it in that one you know dep depending on the age of the students and you know the pictures that you're using but this first discussion might not be that long well it's an apple it's you know but encourage them to talk more about it now we've talked about what it is and you can also start combining at this point even back a couple of steps you know what is it say something about it and where do you think it's going to end up and why you move it okay now we've got more information so why are these together why are these together think about it has your thinking changed that's okay bring out the next one and this one 
might give you, you might get a little uh, you know, controversy on, which is okay. And sometimes, you know, it may not fall specifically into one or the other category. And that's okay, too. That can generate some good discussion. Say something about it, and then they're going to tell where it goes and why. So we get a couple of people explaining that. And obviously, when you're asking, you know, maybe two or three different people to say why it's going to go there, you, you want to say, okay, after the first group goes, you say, okay, who has a different idea? Or who thinks it's going to go on the other side? And why? Who'd like to share that? After that discussion, I make it go where it belongs. So now we talk about it again. Okay, this is, and that's the last picture. Now you have all the information you're going to get. Why are these together? Why are these together? Talk about it. Share a couple. Okay, who wants to share why the left side, why these are together? Okay, thanks. Does anyone have a different idea of why these are together on the left? Usually will turn out to be kind of the same, but they just say it in a different way, but that's okay too. Okay, now who wants to share why the right side is together? What's going on here? Why are these together? What do they have in common? So this is the part now where it connects specifically to the lesson that we were doing. So in the math lesson, the, the graph was about, you know, favorite drinks from the third grade or whatever it was, right? And the question was, which drink had the most votes? And I was getting answer like, 16. And... <laughs> Anyone who's taught for more than a year or two, uh, you've heard answers like that all the time, right? You ask a question, you get an answer that is not connected. The relationship is not very strong, and that's why it's wrong. Here was the actual question. Which drink had the most votes? And these, none of these pictures went with what was in the book, so we didn't go back to the book to look at this, but... If I just ask the question, okay, which drink had the most votes? Then the second question to help them make that question-answer relationship is, okay, which group do, that we have? We have two groups. Which group could have the answer in it? This one on the left or this one on the right? They talk about it with their partners and then they share. Okay, and, you know, most of them will say the group on the left. So I'd move that up there for a reason you'll see in a second. So which drink had the most votes? And then I wanted them to see that, so what do we call this group? This group is a drink group. These are all drinks. And what about these? For something like this, I always wanna say not drink. Because then we talk about, you know, I could put, and on the smart board it was easy because then we could write, you know, I wrote a dog, or you could have other pictures you could bring in and have a, a dog and put it in the middle, right? Okay, where would it go? Drink or not drink? Which drink had the most votes? Dog. Does that fit? No. So it goes over here. So yes, these are all foods, but so the better way of naming it is not drink because anything that's not a drink doesn't answer this question. And then I had another page, so think about it. And we talked about this category one of the vocabulary words we might be looking at right but that the answer must be part of the category or the group called drinks because the question asks about drinks All right so that's what i was using it for here yeah drink that's not too much academic language but the question answer relationship and then the not drink that's kind of a, a concept but notice i didn't put the headings until they could explain why this group is together, why this group is like it is, why this group is like it is. Then you put the, the headings here. Now in this one, if you didn't have a smart board or a Promethean, you know, some kind of an interactive whiteboard, it might be a little bit harder to do totally. We're gonna use the picture, and so if you only had a projector or whatever, or a large TV that you're projecting your computer screen on you'd put this page up and then you'd have to have like some chart paper or something say something about the picture 
And for this one, we're actually going to teach some academic language, right? There are two words that we want them to learn, two ideas. And we're going to use this concept attainment to help them attain the concept. So they would say something about the picture. And then I would write down what they said. You know, the sky is blue. So I'd write that down and I'd put it on one of the pieces of chart paper. Say something else. This is a large picnic. So they would write that down and then I would put it over on the other one. So let's say the sky is blue is over on the left and this is a large picnic over on the right. We're only using one picture in this case, right? But we're using their language, their sentences. So, and when I write it down, right, they have those to, to look at. Um, and if this was on a smart board or whatever, you write the sentence. And then I would, you know, I had a page like this. And then we could, you know, their sentence was written. And then I'd move it to one side or the other. And then, and then go back to this page. Okay, say something else. It is summer. Okay, and then I would come back here and write it is summer and then I would put that one would be go over here too. say something else the grass is green I'd write that out here and then I'd move that one up here now they've got two over here two over here I would start having them after we got the sentence I would have them start thinking about and sharing where they think it's gonna go which side which one does it go with right so we keep doing that a bunch of times until we figure out that the ones that are over here, like it is summer, I can start at and say, how do you know that it's summer? Someone said it's summer. How do you know it's summer? Let's uh, look at it. How do you know it's summer? Nobody's wearing a coat. Somebody has a short sleeve shirt on. She's wearing shorts. And then those would be going over on this side, right? So then after they could tell us why these, you know, what, what's similar about all these, what's similar about all these, and it may take a little bit more prompting. But then for this one, the concept is main ideas, and actually I, put, I would have put them on the uh, opposite sides. So main ideas over here, and all these sentences would have been over on this side. Main ideas and details. So we can then start matching them up. So, right, it is summer, and then we can say, well, let's put all the ones that show it's summer. And we kind of we could talk about it and move them around. And if you were doing it on chart paper, you could, you know, maybe get another paper or whatever and start rearranging it. But see, the, they attained the concept of main idea in detail because they could tell you why these are all together and why these are all together they didn't know the academic language now main idea detail right now they have that academic language and then the rest of the lesson right and the rest of the lesson cycle that would be a focus is finding main ideas identifying main ideas and details right? i did this one and i was getting things like the sky is blue so then I would put that on one side. The rocks are brown and orange. Okay, write it down. That also goes with the sky is blue. For some reason, I've had a lot of trouble with this picture. I had to, with my students, I had to on the fly switch to a different picture. But, right, because I wasn't getting some of the things that I needed. Right, I was thought I'd get, you know, wow, that's awesome. Say something about the picture or anything. I think it's cool. Because I was trying to get at facts. The sky is blue. The rocks are brownish. They are big. An opinion. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Right? That kind of stuff. So once we have right, the ones that are the facts, how, when they can explain that those are all things that you can that are true, it's kind of how they always say it, it's the true, and then the opinions, what somebody thinks about it, then we could give them the words fact and opinion, right? That's the academic language that we're trying to teach and the concept of what is fact, what is opinion. 
So through this activity and using the picture and their words, they attain that concept. And then we can do more activities to strengthen that concept. So that those are a couple of different ways that you can use concept attainment, either with almost all pictures or with one big picture and then the student's own language. And then with the process is you always get them talking about whatever, whatever it is, the picture or their language, and then eventually thinking and sharing which side it's going to go to and why, and that their thinking can change over time to why things are grouped. But then once you can get them to explain what's going on, why they are grouped as they are, then you bring in the academic language that you're trying to teach. With younger students, it's going to be a lot simpler. So, you know, it might be hot and cold or, you know, day and night, things like that. The concept attainment strategy is going to work well when you have two. So the fact and opinion, main ideas and details, uh, hot and cold, living and non-living, mammals and reptiles. Right? When, when you have two things that you can categorize, this would be one, one activity that you can use to help them get that concept. So that is the concept attainment strategy. That is one of your options for this first assignment. So you should have learned the process behind presenting or doing a concept attainment lesson using the pictures like this one, or using one picture in their language. And in the next podcast, we'll teach you the process of making it. How do you make the pictures come in and do all the things that I did? That will be in the next podcast.